We're asked to find the next two terms, meaning a sub six and a sub seven, in a sub n, where n is greater than or equal to zero, beginning with three, five, 11, 21, 43, 85, and so on. So we know the first term is a sub zero, followed by a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, a sub five, and we're asked to find a sub six and a sub seven. Let's begin by looking at how the terms are increasing. Notice three plus two is equal to five, five plus six is equal to 11, 11 plus 10 is equal to 21, 21 plus 22 is equal to 43, 43 plus 42 is equal to 85. So at first the pattern doesn't seem very clear, but notice how to determine a sub two, which is 11, we have to add six to five, and six is equal to two times three. Notice to get 21, we have to add 10 to 11, and 10 is equal to two times five. Similarly, to get 43, we have to add 22 to 21, and 22 is two times 11. Which means to get a sub six, we'll have to add two times 43 to 85, or we can say a sub six is equal to 85 plus two times 43. Again, we take the previous term and then add two times the term before that term. 85 plus two times 43 is equal to 85 plus 86, which is equal to 171. Let's go ahead and write that down. A sub six is equal to 171, which means A sub seven is equal to 171 plus two times 85, which is 171 plus 170, which equals 341. And now we're asked to give the recursive definition for the sequence. So again, if we want to find any term a sub n, we take the term before it, which is a sub n minus one, and then add two times the term before a sub n minus one, which is two times a sub n minus two. And let's just make sure this works. Let's say we want to find a sub five. Using the recurrence relation, a sub five is equal to a sub four plus two times a sub three. A sub four is equal to 43 plus two times a sub three, which is 21, which does give us 43 plus 42, which is 85. So our recurrence relation is correct. The recursive definition also requires the initial conditions, which in this case are a sub zero equals three and a sub one equals five. And now for the next question, we want to use the characteristic root technique to find a closed formula for the sequence. So to use the characteristic root technique, the first step is to write the recurrence relation in the form of a sub n plus alpha times a sub n minus one plus beta times a sub n minus two equals zero, which means we set the right side of the equation equal to zero, which gives us a sub n minus a sub n minus one minus two times a sub n minus two equals zero. From here, notice alpha is equal to negative one and beta is equal to negative two, which indicates the characteristic equation is x squared minus x minus two equals zero. And now we need to solve this equation and it is factorable. The factors of x squared are x and x. The factors of negative two that add to negative one are negative two and positive one. And therefore the solutions are x equals two or x equals negative one. Because the characteristic equation has two distinct solutions, the solution to the recurrence relation is in the form of a sub n equals a times r sub one to the power of n plus b times r sub two to the power of n, which in our case gives us a sub n is equal to a times, let's set r sub one equal two, and r sub two equal negative one, giving us a times two to the power of n plus b times negative one to the power of n. And then from here we need to determine the values of a and b using the initial conditions a sub zero equals three and a sub one equals five. For a sub zero, n is equal to zero, which gives us a times two to the power of zero plus b times negative one to the power of zero equals three. Simplifying, we have the equation a plus b equals three. 
Remember, any non-zero value to the zero power is one. And now using a sub one equals five, we have a sub one equals a times two to the power of one plus b times negative one to the power of one equals five. Well, this gives us the equation two a minus b equals five. This is supposed to be a three here. And now we need to solve this system of equations to determine the values of a and b. And notice we can use the method of elimination by simply adding the equations together because the b terms are opposites. So adding these two equations together, a plus two a is three a, and b minus b is zero, giving us three a equals three plus five, which is eight. Solving for a, we have a equals eight thirds. Now we need to determine the value of b. Let's go ahead and use this first equation. If a is equal to eight thirds, we have the equation eight thirds plus b equals three, and therefore b is equal to three minus eight thirds. Well, three is equal to nine thirds. Nine thirds minus eight thirds is one third. We have b equals one third. Well, now that we know that a is equal to eight thirds and b is equal to one third, we now substitute eight thirds for a and one third for b, which gives us the closed formula a sub n is equal to eight thirds times two to the power of n plus one third times negative one to the power of n, which is the solution to the recurrence relation. I hope you found this helpful.